And good morning, students! Welcome to our Valenzuela live streaming. This is going to be another exciting day to learn and discover about volcanoes. Before we start, please keep in mind the following reminders. We are already on our second week of quarter 3 in the science module and our objective for today is to explain what happens when a volcano erupts. Last week, we have discovered that volcanologists have different ways to classify volcanoes. One way is according to the shape of its cone as shield, cinder, and composite. Another one is active or inactive volcanoes. We also discovered the different types of volcanic eruption as phreatic or hydrothermal, phreatomagmatic, strombolian, vulcanian, and plinian. But how do volcanoes erupt? Where does magma come from? Does the type of eruption has something to do with the characteristics of magma? And how do volcanoes affect us and other living things? So much curiosity, right? But we will answer all that in our discussion today. Let's start first with the lifeblood of every volcano. Magma. During your previous years, you have learned that our Earth is composed of three layers, the crust, mantle, and core. Magma originates in the lower part of the Earth's crust and in the upper portion of the mantle. Differences in the temperature, pressure, and structural formation in the mantle and crust caused magma to form in different place. Like solid rock, magma is a mixture of minerals. It also contains small amounts of dissolved gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur. The high temperatures and pressure under Earth's crust keep magma in its fluid state. Volcanic activity can be very fascinating. After an explosive eruption, a scenic cone-shaped structure may be produced or changes on its slope can be observed. The emissions of a volcano provide us with clues on what materials are found inside the earth. Some eruptions are very explosive, while many others are not. What determines the nature of eruption? There are primary factors affecting the volcano's eruptive style. These are the magma's temperature and its chemical composition. These factors can affect the magma's viscosity in different ways. Viscosity is the property of the material's resistance to flow. It is also described as the liquid's thickness and stickiness. The more viscous and thicker the material is, the greater is its resistance to flow. For instance, syrup is more viscous than water. Let's discuss how each factor affects the viscosity of magma. First, temperature. The viscosity of magma decreases with temperature. The higher the temperature of magma, the lower is its viscosity. As lava flows, 
it cools and begins to harden. Its ability to flow decreases and eventually it stops. Next, chemical composition. Erupted magma or lava with less silica content has low viscosity that it can travel a great distance forming a thin sheet. Lava with high silica content is too viscous to travel far and tends to break up as it flows. Lava with low amount of gas and high silica content is very viscous and does not flow out at all as it rises forming a columnar plug in the vent. And lava with low amount of gas as it rises has high viscosity that it piles up at a vent resulting in a dome. The type of magma in the magma chamber determines the type of volcanic eruption. In general, eruptions can be categorized as either effusive or explosive. Effusive eruptions involve the outpouring of basaltic magma that is relatively low in viscosity and in gas content. Explosive eruptions generally involve magma that is more viscous and has a higher gas content. Such magma is often shattered into pyroclastic fragments by explosive gas expansion during an eruption. Take note, volcanoes are not limited to a single eruptive behavior classification. Just like the Mount St. Helens, which exhibited complex eruptions of different types during its eruptive cycle. All eruptions are the result of magma from under the Earth's crust being pushed up to the surface where it erupts as lava, ash, and rock. But what mechanisms drive this process? What is it exactly that makes magma rise to the Earth's surface and explode? To understand how volcanoes erupt, one first needs to consider the structure of the Earth. As mentioned earlier, Earth has different layers which include the inner and outer core, the mantle, and the crust. In the mantle region, temperature reaches up to 1000 degrees Celsius. Due to the high temperature and increasing amount of pressure in the mantle, Rocks can melt to form molten rock or magma. Magma is less dense than the surrounding rock, and materials with less density will usually float. The magma will try to float up to the surface, seeking out cracks and weaknesses in the mantle which can form magma chambers. With the right conditions such as extreme pressure, changing heat, and tectonic activity, the magma can rise through the magma chamber and erupt through the Earth's crust causing a volcanic explosion. Volcanic eruption is often associated with negative effects. It can cause loss of lives and properties. As the lava flows or pyroclastic materials are ejected in the air, they can destroy anything in their way. Actually, it has a good and bad side. For example, the eruption of Pinatubo in 1991, one of the longest volcanic eruptions, has caused the decrease in the Earth's temperature for almost two years. The strong winds during its eruption spread the ash particles into the entire planet and reflected so much sunlight back into space. The result was a measurable cooling of the Earth's surface for a period of almost two years. Volcanoes also affect people positively. For example, the eruption of Pinatubo Volcano has created spectacular scenery. Thus, 
they termed it as a beautiful disaster. People became creative also by making earthenware out of the ash fall from the Pinatubo volcano eruption. Likewise, the eruption of Musuwan volcano in Bukidnon has produced very rich soils for farming years after its eruption in 1867. Remember that not all disasters are bad. Volcanoes are Earth's geologic architects. They've created more than 80% of our planet's surface. Their explosive force create mountains as well as craters. Lava rivers spread into bleak landscapes that as time goes by, these volcanic rocks liberate nutrients and creating remarkably fertile soils that is very useful to us humans and other living things. Now, let's see if you understand our lesson. Let's have a simple activity. Arrange the following into their proper order of how a volcano erupts. Type in the comment section the correct sequence of letters. You have 30 seconds. Timer starts now. The correct answer is this. Did you get it right? Amazing grade 9 students! Here are the key points of our lesson today. Magma originates in the lower part of the Earth's crust and in the upper portion of the mantle, and it contains small amounts of dissolved gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur. The primary factors affecting the volcano's eruptive style are the magma's temperature and its chemical composition. All eruptions are the result of magma from under the Earth's crust being pushed up to the surface where it erupts as lava, ash, and rock. And volcanic eruption brings negative and positive effect on humans and other living things. Let's answer some of your questions and clarifications. Does the composition of magma have something to do with the volcano shape? Yes. Lava with less silica content and has low viscosity that it can travel a great distance forming a thin sheet forms shield volcano. Lava with high silica content is too viscous to travel far and tends to break up as it flows form cinder cone. And lava with low amount of gas and high silica content which is very viscous and does not flow out forms composite volcano. For further questions and clarifications, your subject teacher will guide you in answering your activity sheets. Thank you grade 9 students for joining me today on Exploring Volcanoes. This is Mom Cherry and see you again on another fun-filled discovery.